A lot has happened in the past year, especially in the last couple of months. But last summer is also when I decided to download Unity and take a serious attempt at game development. I've tried many times in the past to try and learn Unity, but I gave up every time. I would always try to do the roll a ball tutorial, but at the end I was always left with the same question. Well what now? I've never had an idea for a game that I wanted to make, so I ended up just quitting. However this time was different, I was going to learn from my past mistakes and do what I needed to start making my first game. This time, I started by doing the roll a ball tutorial. This time, I started by thinking of a game that I actually wanted to make. I've always been a fan of 3D platformers. Mario, Crash Bandicoot, Ratchet and Clank, A Hat in Time. I've played them all. Being such a huge fan of these games, I wanted to try to make one of my own. But I also wanted to add a bit of a twist. Last summer, the Crash Team Racing remake was released, and I played that for way too long. But it also helped inspire me to try out something new. I realized that I could try to make a racing platformer game. It would be like Mario Kart, but without the go-karts. Finally, I had a reason to start learning Unity, so I started looking up everything I could to learn how to make this game. I watched a lot of videos by people like Jason Wyman, Games Plus James, and even the Unity master himself, Brackies. I even started reading some of Unity's documentation, which is almost as fun as reading a dictionary. At this point, I was learning the basics of how to move objects around in Unity. It was starting to look really similar to a certain tutorial, so I had to change something. I took a break from Unity and moved over to 3D modeling software called Blender. I wanted to create a character for my game, so I watched a video to create a low poly character because I thought it would be easier, and it also said I could do it in 10 minutes. I followed along, but also made a few changes here and there to give it a unique look. One thing I noticed about popular mascot characters is their body proportions. You can break their bodies down into three equal sized parts. Their heads are usually about the same size as their torso, which is also about the same size as their legs. In the end, I was left with this. I don't know about you, but I think I might be putting Nintendo out of a job soon. Now I could just take this and put it in Unity, but it wouldn't look very good, so next I tried to make some animations. I started by making some animations for running and jumping, and I kept adding new animations whenever I needed them. Summer was coming to an end soon, and school would be starting back up, so I knew that I would have less time to work on my game. As expected, I didn't make any progress on the game during my fall semester, so let's just skip ahead. Near the end of November, I finally started to have more free time, and my semester was coming to an end very soon. I took this opportunity to start working really hard on my game again. I finished my character's movement, the camera movement, the animations, and I added color. I was really happy with my results, so I decided to share it with Reddit, and people over there really seemed to like it as well. This made me even more motivated to continue working on it. I initially wanted this to be a multiplayer game, so at this point I knew I had to start learning how to make an online multiplayer game. Eventually I got something working on LAN, so people on the same network could play together, but the only way you could play online was through something called port forwarding. And I'm pretty sure most people, including myself, don't really understand port forwarding, so I scrapped the online multiplayer aspect and decided to come back to it later. By now my spring semester of school was going to be starting soon, so once again I thought I wouldn't have much time to work on the game. But this semester, I was taking a Unity game development class, and the professor said that I could use this game as my final project. Now that I had an excuse to work on this during school, I got right back to work. Instead of doing online multiplayer, I decided to start with local multiplayer this time. I bought an asset called Rewired, which is super useful for handling input in Unity. Even well-known games have used Rewired to handle input, like Gang Beast, Two Point Hospital, and Risk of Rain 2. Pretty soon, I had multiple cameras and playable characters set up, and I was ready to start making an actual game out of this. As I said before, this is going to be a racing game, so I had to figure out how to make players race laps and keep track of their positions. But before that, I needed a track for them to race on. I quickly put together a track with 8 different colored sections. There are 8 different sections because I wanted the game to have 8 players, though there will be 8 different player colors and I decided to use these colors in a level. Next, I started setting up invisible checkpoints around the level. Each player would have to touch these checkpoints in order to complete one lap. When they finish three laps, they will finish the race. Normally, in games like Mario Kart, when a player finishes the race, the AI takes over and drives them around the track while their player model celebrates. I don't have anything like this set up, so I just have them shoot off in the direction they were last moving. Now, to figure out who wins the race, I needed to keep track of what position each player is in. This part can easily be done by keeping track of their current lap, current checkpoint, and the distance to the next checkpoint of each player. With that information, you can just sort it and see who's in 1st place, 2nd place, all the way up to 8th place. Now that I had a game that is actually playable, I wanted to add some menus to increase the player experience. When they start up the game, they should see the main menu, and they should also be able to pause the game and quit at any time. I wanted to replicate the scrolling flag background from both Crash Team Racing and the Mario Kart main menus. I figured out how to make the flags move, and then repeat infinitely. I also layered some dots on top of that to make it look a bit more interesting. Then I made some buttons in a hexagon shape to stay with the low poly look of the game. 
I also wanted the main menu to change to all 8 of the player colors, so I made 8 buttons, where each button would change the color to the main menu. I was able to do this with something called color.lerp. For those of you who don't know, lerp is short for linear interpolation, which is just a fancy way of saying that something interpolates, but linearly. Now I know what you're thinking. Cody, I think there's something missing. And yeah, I left this part of the menu empty so that I could spice it up with some artwork later. But I thought that was good enough, and that I would move on to the pause menu next. Basically, I just copied and pasted the main menu, and changed the name of the buttons. I also made it so that the color of the main menu represents the player who paused the game, instead of having the menu change colors. This way you could easily tell who paused the game. The end of my spring semester was coming up, so it was almost time to present this game for my game development class. People in the class seemed to really like it, and I even got a comment from my professor telling me that I should continue working on it over the summer. And that's exactly what I've been doing. Once summer started, I started to think of what to do next, and I wanted to add some artwork and make some power-up items like the ones in Mario Kart. I went to Reddit and found an artist named Alex, who had an art style that I really liked. I'll leave a link to his work below. His previous work has been on board games, but I figured video game art wouldn't be all that different. So I reached out to him, and he agreed to work with me. We talked back and forth about what kind of artwork we should put in the main menu, and now we're finally finished with all of them. Here's what the main menu looks like now. Every time Alex sent me a sketch or a finished piece, I was always smiling because not only did he redesign my character, but he made everything look so good. While he's working on these, I've also been adding a menu so that players could join in or drop out for a local multiplayer. It also has a sub-menu for changing character customizations, but I don't have any costumes for the players to wear yet. Currently, me and Alex have been working on the artwork for power-up items. I'll show a couple of them here to give you guys an idea of what they look like. But this is where the game stands today. So what do you guys think of the progress that I made in the past year? Did I do a lot? Or does it seem like I should have done a lot more? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you want to keep up with the progress of the game, I'll leave a link to our Discord in the description. I don't think I'll make another video on this game anytime soon, unless I have a major update to it. However, I do plan on making other types of Unity game dev videos, so if you want to see those, make sure to subscribe. And also leave a comment below for anything else you'd like to see. Alright, see ya.